Congress. Today's presentation is Zarthushti's Days of Future Past. And in this regard, I would like to introduce the two speakers, and maybe just one will speak, but they have both authored this. Thank you. Or let me start with Dr. Rustin Mary. Of course, a full bio of both of them is in the big booklet, which you all have received. I'll just go through some very salient points about their background and what they have achieved. Now, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Better? Okay. Rustin Mary is a native Persian speaker and completed his primary education in Tehran, attending the Rostam Abadian and Razi High Schools. He holds two bachelor degrees in arts and in humanities from the University of British Columbia and a master's degree in biblical studies also from the U University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Dr. Mary also earned a PhD degree from the School of Oriental and African Studies in the University of London in United Kingdom. Currently, Rustin is a faculty member at the Department of Humanities and Social Studies at the Douglas College, New Westminster, British Columbia. Rustin, would you please take your seat? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the next speaker is Dr. Moved Dr. Adeshir Behi. Prior, <clears throat> sorry, prior to initiation as a Moved in 2010, Dr. Behi completed his postgraduate studies in biotechnology, software systems, and biomaterials in Iran, Canada, and the UK. And incidentally, Dr. Behi has mentioned that his pastime is collecting degrees, so I'm just passing that on to you. <laughs> his experience in scientific research and his PhD degree helped him to expertly and meticulously take notes and sound recordings to be filed and reused in learning. His dedication is to the youth and he wishes to impart as much of the Zarthushti beliefs to them. In 2012, he chaired the successful in the year 3750, thus spoke Zarathustra, which was an international conference of scholars. <clears throat> uh, sorry, Ardeshi's knowledge is not merely limited to the ability of recitation of prayers, his strong desire is to become a learned man of religion, and his most important duty is to pass knowledge of the religion in brief and simple words to the next generation. To conclude, he is co-chairing the 18th North American Zoroastrian Congress to be held in Vancouver, BC in the summer of 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Which year is the conference? I'm sorry, I didn't get the last one. Can I? Okay. <laughs> good luck. Thank you very much, Bella. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, Madame Monsieur. Mom Dodetun Beniki. Um, Thank you very much for coming so early. Uh, I haven't expected too many people. <laughs> uh, actually, the, the talk that I'm going to present, and actually it's, work, it's a privilege and honor working with Rastin, um, it goes back to 2009, almost five years ago. Um, there was a Wars Rastin Congress in Dubai. I know Alayar was there, Mr. Davistani. I don't know anybody else. Kairos, you were there? Yes, that was, that was a very interesting Congress. 
And uh, I'm pretty sure those, uh, for those who they were the, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they remember, but for those who haven't been there or wasn't there, um, the story was, um, there was a scene, and I know, the, let's give some background. In Dubai, we wasn't allowed to talk about conversion, um, anything about uh, Iran, like Persian Gulf. For them, there is no Persian Gulf, it's Arabic Gulf. And so this was restrictions. So what our uh, presenters were, was thinking, um, to not mentioning anything about Iran. So the master of ceremony came on the scene and says, oh, Iranian Zartushtis immigrated from Iran to India without mentioning anything, why and how, and then says, from Gujarat in India, they separated, or they start to immigrate to all over the world. And then scenes start. Young people running to the scene, carrying the flags, showing that immigration happens from Gujarat in India into all the worlds. And then from proud Iranians, they say, where is the flag of Iran? We miss Iran here. They didn't understand the first part because it was in English and Farsi was a barrier. I mean, speaking language was a barrier. So they were so angry and there was a start of conflict. So, and the same thing happens. I mean, we are very familiar, Parsis, Iranians, and conflicts, and talks, and we, we, we are very familiar with these things. So that was a real challenge for us, uh, honestly. I'm, I'm a very honest person at these things. So we were like in the middle of crisis. And interestingly, I ran to a very nice Parsi lady and she asked me, like, why, why this happens? Like, why you're angry? Why are these people shouting? And I told her the story. And she told me a story which um, deeply affected me. And the story was, he told, this is exactly what she told me. Like, we were two brothers, and I was the only sister. And my two brothers always fighting with each other. And one say, I am the one. And then the other one say, no, I am the one. And the conflicts was going on in our family. And uh, do you know who was that guy? So no. And he says, that was Shah Bahram of Arjavad. So all the Parsis, they want to be in Iran one day. That's the motherland. There is no question about it. So we want to be with our brothers and sisters in Iran. That's a homeland. That's a motherland. So that was very interesting because although we have some different cultural thing, probably growing in Iran or in India, or speaking different languages, Farsi or Hindi or Gujarati, but at the same time, all of us, we want to be back home. We want to be somewhere as a one family, be united. So the team of the Congress uh, was unity. And we thought probably that would be a good talk about it. Uh, so that's why we, we brought this one up. But before that, I had the chance to talk and told the story to Rastin. And then we came to this idea, and a ch chain of talks. So there are lots of, hopefully, presentation and publication would be in future from us. But for this time and the case of unity and how the words are the Abar Mardan or Superman kind of person, Shah Bahra Abar So we want, uh, so our presentation would be uh, a kind of, kind of professional scholar thing. We don't want to get into the Motion, uh, emotions and talk, so I just go through the text and then we are open to talk. How about that? Perfect, okay. So, I should be far away from this. Okay, I leave it. 
In their home country, Iran, Zartushtis defined themselves as Behdins, or the followers of the good religion. And despite living amongst majority Hindus and Muslim in Iran and India, in India and Iran respectively, they mentioned their own culture based on religious and regional ties of identifications. This culture phenomenon, Zartoshtiness, would not so easily dissipate with the advent of the modern world. The Parsis brought with them from Iran a solid sense of their own ethnicity. And while Zartoshti religious belief and practices were abandoned in India and in Iran, particularly after secularism in 20th century, century their appear cism with indifferent Parsi and Iranian Zartoshti groups, ethic, political, and cultural identities that have persisted through different epochs and into the succeeding generation. On a grassroots level, these uh, ethnic ethnicization may indeed be traced all the way back to early literary production extant in Middle Persian or Pahlavi texts. It is our contention that this first institution expressed of this ethnic identity based on the religion and the Zartushti tides of identification came at the height of mid-10th century Zartushtis. The Zartushti understanding as people was expressed in innumerable mid Persian Pahlavi texts. One of the most integrating of these is the Arbab, uh, is the Abarmard Shah Wahram Warzawand or Warzawand, which we say in Parsi. A unique, impassionate, and polemical text describing hardship that was expressed and experienced by the Zartushti community in Iran after the Islam, Islamic conquest of the religion and subsequent punitive laws that were upon the adherents of the ancient religion. The text highlights the popular myth of the return to Iran, the quasi messianic figure Shah Bahram Ebarjavand, or the victorious King Bahram and his reestablishment of the Zartushti religion as the dominant religion in Iran. Various editors, editation of this book have been examined, translated, and discussed by a number of scholars, such as Sir Hollard Walter Bailey, Jahangir Kausi Tawadia, Miss Mary Boyce, and uh, Francois de Boulez in different texts. And Francois, who comments that this text is a poemic rhythmic constantly with on, at, uh, that believes the Arab consequence of Iran and pins the deliverance, it does clearly belong to Islamic periods. It is believed that such Zartushti theological narratives sprouted up both during and after the first wave of Parsi immigrants who left Iran. Parsis settled in India, wherein they later laid the foundation for the what may be called the formal organization known as Panchiats. It is our intention that salience of the Shah Bahram myth amongst Parsi, Parsi immigrants community in India and in diaspora was an outgrowth of the Zartushti identity. 
common background and historical memory enables Artushtis to diverse trades and economical sectors in both Iran and Iran, in India to find common narrative and political aspiration that was remained prevalently over time. A key factor in both of the maintenance of the Zartushti culture and political aspiration of the immigration community was the noted theological narratives. So at this time, we would go through the text. It's a very beautiful text. And um, actually, it's all in Pahlavi. And uh, I'm just going through it. And you can probably I move somewhere so everybody can see it. So you have the text all in Pahlavi. And um, I'm just going it and read it. And then we go through the translation. So it's so beautiful. And it's, it's very poetic. So um, I hope I can do it good. So I started with the name of the God. So Benam Yazdan. Benam Yazdan. Abar Mardan. Abar Madan Shah Wahram Varzawan. So Varzawan, which we use it these days, Varzawan as well. Kebovad Ku Pekiyad as Hindugan Ku Madan Shah Wahram as Dude Kiyan. کو پیل است هزار ابر سران سر است پیلبان کو آرسته درفش دارید به ایوان خسرگان پیش لشگر دارند به سپاه دین داران مردی پیک عباید کرد زیرک ترگمان کو روید بگویید به هندوگان کو اما چی دید از دست تازیان ابر یک گروه دین نظار کرد و از او شاهان شاه اما از او از ایریشان چون دیوان دین داران چو سگ خورند نان به ستادن پادشاهی از خسروگان نه به هنر نه به مردی به افسوس و ریا به صدادن به گریفتن به ستمی از مردمان زن و خواستی های شیرین باغ بستان گزیدا ابر نیهادند به بختند ابر سران عباز اسیرک خواستند ده گران بنگر کوچندی ببخش سوری بنگر کوچند بدی افکند در این درج به این جهان کونی است بدتر از او اندر جهان و اما به آید آن شاهرام از دود کیان به آرین کین تازگان چون رستم آرد صد کین سیاوشان مسکدی ها فروهیریم بنشاریم آتشان از دستی زاری ها بکنیم از جهان تا ونی روند درج ویشودگان از این جهان and with فروزت بر درود و شادی ها uh, it's a very, very powerful, interesting text, and uh, let's see what's the translation of it. In the name of God, on the coming of the victorious King Bahram, when shall a page arrive from the land of Hindustan and Hindus, announcing the arrival of King Bahram? from the lineage of Kekavus, for he shall come with thousand elephants ahead. He shall stand ahead of them, holding elaborated flag, 
coated of arms, and in the style of Sasanian kings. The believers, Zarthushti or Zrastians, shall then march their army ahead. An intelligent man ought to be sent as an interpreter or Dormagon, so that he may go to the land of the Hindus and describe what we have seen at the hand of Arabs. Upon one group, they have caused religious application and have murdered our king, and under them, they have adopted Dominic religion and eat bread like a dog. They have usurped the kingship, kingship from the Sasanids, neither by art nor by virtue, but via adherence and descent. They conquered and forcibly took from the people their women and sweet things, states and perfume gardens, they have instituted poll tax. They left multitude without leader and extract a large territory. See how much evil that lie or wicked spirit has thrown into the world. For nothing is worse than that lie. May he come from among us the king Bahram from the lineage of Kekabus. May we bring such anger as Rustam brought anger of hundreds Siabushan. May, may we throw down masjids and set up sacred fire. May we Cleanse the world of wicked idols. May Dominic creatures be annihilated from the world. Concluded in peace, happiness. Indeed, the most latest expressions of ethic Zartushti identity in Iran, India, and in diaspora today is the religio cultural aspiration emerging as an organizing movement spread headed in 1860s by Manukchi Limji Hitari Hatari sorry thank you a notable Parsi immigrants or immigrants from among the Zartushti community in village of Kerman and Yazd. This nascent Zartushti identity made great inroads as the basis of the new educational, bringing Zartushti and Iran centered history and narratives to both Iran and Parsi community worldwide. Despite attempts to unite the entire Zartushti community under the banner of Zartushti peoplehood, united under an umbrella structure of Zartushti identity, Parsi and Iranian divisions have often prevailed in the diaspora. At the same time, when it came to supporting the communities and the Darbamers in Iran, India and diaspora avoid voices from both Iranian and Parsi community are often in agreement and for consolidations. It is our contention that the rare examination and retelling of the rich, popular and common albeit theological narratives extend in both communities will be a very useful force in unifying the Parsi-Iranian divide in the diaspora and bring the community closer together. 
Thank you very much for your attention. So we are open to questions, I guess. This text, yeah, it was written um, no later than um, um, 10th century. So it's, it's, it's a very fascinating text. It's actually collected in a, a wonderful manuscript, a book. It's called the Pahlavi Texts. It's called the Abarmadan Shah Vahram Barzavant. Uh, yes, you can actually, I believe, find it. Um, there is a um, website called the Titus Project. I think it's part of that. It, it may be there. Otherwise, um, the text is also published in Iran, and uh, there are copies all over, I think. Yeah. So look for Pahlavi texts. Alas, no, so far. There are some editions written by Mary Boyce, Francois Dublois, and Harold Bailey. They all have worked on this very unique text. Yeah, Pahlavi text. How did it come about? Did somebody find it? Well, the collection of Pahlavi texts, they were always um, around in different parts of uh, communities in Iran. At one point, most likely in the 18th century, all these Pahlavi texts were actually transported to India, and thank God for that. Otherwise, in Iran, they would have been completely perished. So the Parsi community had copies, and later on in 20th century, they actually found series of copies as well in uh, in Iran. Among, yes, yeah. Next question. Yes. Uh, regarding uh, Dubai situation, <laughs> I was there too, and uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, if I was involved in the beginning of it, just to give you a little bit. Definitely. Uh, I agree with you, then thank you for bringing this one up. Um, the thing is, like, uh, majority of our community, they are not, they are no, not knowing about the behind the scenes. So that's behind the scenes, I mean, that's why the conflict happened. So when we were on the ground, that was a chaotic thing. You, you know about it. <laughs> so I was the translator. I was between Iranians and Parsi, and they trusted. But thank you very much. Yes, definitely. We have time for just one more question, because we need to clear the room in a few moments. Firdosh, please go ahead. Okay. Mr. Dabdeskan was behind the scenes in Dubai. I was behind the behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take your time. <laughs> the only restriction I know that was put officially on us was none of us could have a Jewish entry visa on our passport. Did you realize? Yeah. We had one speaker who had visited Jerusalem or Tel Aviv University and they said, tell him to throw this passport away and get another one. <laughs> so that was the only 
Thank you. And I, I was involved from day one in working at it. It was sad that the negative reaction that came from the Iranian community in the beginning, some of them said, why are you holding a World Congress of Russia in an Arab nation? Well, uh, you used the word Tazikan. Tazikan. Sarasius, Iran, of the body, translation. Tazikan and Basket is the other. We have had no jokes done of Arabs, which is in our third era. So please have a little wider scope of life. Don't make it so narrow. Uh, in terms of the Parsi Irani divide that you're talking about, of course, we have involved ourselves for many years on working at it, especially from Fazana. We even have committees for those kind of things. Every committee has been asked to work together with and make sure we come together. There are a lot of simple divides. But I don't think that matters. I do kind of think I have to do that. What really matters our divide is our fundamental understanding from one group is that Zarathustri religion is a religion by birth, and the other group says it is a religion that is universal and has nothing to do with birth. Until we reconcile that, my friend, we will always have to work. So having said that, my question, <laughs> and Rasti knows because he was one of my important people I got over from the University of Dubai for his presentation in the following program. And he has done wonderful work as a young man Thank you. in the University of <laughs> In this issue, I have a question. When I read or I try to understand this, do you really mean that Shah Barjavan is our next social that we are supposed to wait to find? Uh, is that a correct way of doing it? Do yeah. yeah. that's, that's thing gives you <laughs> the scholar part. <laughs> no. And I do religious part. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think this this text is actually mostly secular. It's not so much religious as it is secular. So, um, it, so what it, is this? It's, what it's, are we supposed to imagine in this figure of Shawaram? Shawaram, I think um, um, perhaps along the uh, it's it's along the same line of teleological understanding and belief among the Zora as Artushti, Since the, I mean, you find it in uh, in Avestan texts. This is not social. This is uh, this is an uh, Im immediate savior and uh, a person who's supposed to reestablish Zoroastrian religion in Iran. Um, this this um, I mean I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, there is um, during the Safavid dynasty in the 15th century there was a French gentleman who was actually a um, became an emissary of the Shah Abbas of Safavids. He actually um, lived in Iran for decades. And one of the things he actually mentions about the uh, Isfahan, city of Isfahan, he actually lived amongst the Zoroastrians in Isfahan. At that time, there was a Gab Mahale in Isfahan. Of course, by the end of the 15th century, they were all annihilated um, after the reestablishment of Shiism in Iran. So he actually uh, uh, mentions that amongst the Zartushtis in the city of Isfahan, there is this prevailing belief that one day their, their, their religion will actually be reestablished in the empire, and that empire will be Zoroastrian again. So that's basically along the same sort of narrative that has continued. It has nothing to do with the Saushant. Yeah. It's not the Messiah. The term Messiah is applied strictly in, in terms of religious belief and the frasho kerati, when the world will be reestablished from the beginning. This is just the temporal, <laughs> so-called, yeah. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, it's about time, I guess, now. <laughs> Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. More questions? More questions? Go ahead. Let's, I'd like to make yeah. a comment about the cats. First of all, again, I want to know when actually this came on the surface. And uh, my observation has been also now in that matter that it's, it's, it's been exploited by some geopolitical reason, especially that that's their prophet, and, but, and 
I think. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your comments. Mm. Well, um, I, think, yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. I think, yeah, I think sort of uh, religious, I mean, texts and um, um, manuscripts and so forth, uh, they're used and abused and, you know, in, by, by different things. I mean, it serves these ancient, and everything ancient often serves nationalities and, uh, uh, you know, religious identities everywhere. So, I mean, yeah, you're quite right. It, this, you know, some Baha'is may have actually claimed uh, that yeah, this is like you know, our prophet and so forth. But like I earlier mentioned, this is not a, a, a religious text. This is a secular text, and it must have been in circulation at that time amongst the Iranians of all you know backgrounds. Yeah. So uh, the, even though there had been attempt to sort of use or rather abuse texts, ancient texts, to serve certain interests. Um, the approach generally now is just quite, um, you know, we, we, we approach the text as what it is, ancient text. And uh, like, I, like Adisha had mentioned in the pre presentation, it's really impassioned and quite teleological. Yeah, of course. And I, I don't know, where is your origin? Are you from Iran? Yes, sir. Are you visiting Iran? I am. Would, you, would you like to go to Seti Pir, Pir Sabs? So you, you, I, I'm, I'm assuming that you, you would like to go back one day in Iran to have your, My yes, My yes. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, that's the whole story. Exactly. So that's, that's like, it, it might be me and you. One of us wrote that one. Uh, so this is all about your feeling. I mean, what, what you think deep inside yourself. So that's the whole reason. I mean, that's why we brought it up. We, that's why I just, I mean, the whole work, I would, should give the credit to Rastin. No. He puts it together nicely. Um, so the whole thing is, we, we, what we want to do, honestly, uh, this is the challenge we have. Our community have this challenge. We don't want to face the facts. We are afraid of facing, facing the facts. So this is a scholar people, these are intelligent people, these are the people who go through the text and show us that's the reality. And if you don't want to listen to them, actually we close the doors. So there are many, many, many texts. I mean, this is just the only one. That's why I told you at the very beginning that the reason I want really to do this, especially with this nice young gentleman, is passing this word to you that um, if you close all the doors, if you don't look at the texts, if you don't look at your ancestor work, and then say, oh, I am the one who knows everything, we're losing our grounds. Our ancestors, they were very smart, brilliant people. Nowadays, we we challenging our movements uh, with why we should have women as a movements and movement yards. This is not something new. There are texts that we had women going out of the country and encouraging people and educate them about their religion. So, I mean that's. I mean, this is just the beginning. I just, we just want to, I mean, I don't want to say anything more than this, that these are the questions. Why shouldn't women be movements in our community? Why? Why you don't accept them? In every, every day as a Zartushti, we're supposed to do five prayers. One of the prayers is Ayuri Sarutram Ga. In the, one of the verses, we worship movements. We Thank those movements who are going out of the country and encouraging people to convert. I'm saying nothing. I'm just telling you the Avesta that you're practicing. So this is the reality. If you don't want to read, I mean, doing the Avesta as a meditation, it's perfect. An understanding is another one. Let's, let's be in 21st century listen to intelligent people who are doing their scholar thing. Let's go ourselves. Why don't we research? Why don't we learn more about our, our texts? So I think that would be the last. So I have a question for all the audience. 
So is there any Iranian Farsi speaker in community? Could you, could you please raise your hands? Farsi speaking. Farsi speaking. And then who is speaking like Gujarati speakers or Indians? But I would like those who are Zartushtis, please stand up. So we are Zartushtis. We are one community. That's the unity. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you all very much for coming to this session.